YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here, how you doing? So I wanna talk with you today about um, a topic that um, I'm continuing to learn about and I find very interesting. It has to do with um, water chemistry. And when we think of water chemistry, we think of the hardness or softness of the water. We think of um, what elements might be in it, what minerals might be in it. And um, there are some factors, three key factors that people tend to talk about the most. And those are uh, pH and uh, GH and KH. Now, um, KH is one that deals with carbonate. You have your, your uh, calcium carbonate in the water. Calcium carbonate is the most prominent thing you'll find in most water, and it is essential to your fish. Uh, fish uh, use it in ways I hadn't realized before. We can, uh, we can pick up our minerals through eating, and fish, they have a thing called osmoregulation, which is they more or less take in these minerals based on what's readily available in the water as it passes over their skin, as it goes through their mouth, past the gills. So they need, they need the minerals, they need the uh, calcium carbonate that's in there to help with things like bone growth, uh, heart function, blood flow, things of this nature, and so it's vital. If your water is, uh, is low in its calcium carbonate, your fish will have issues with growth and they'll have issues with uh, uh, things such as blood flow and will be susceptible to, to disease. So KH, know the KH value coming out of your tap. You can, there's uh, several tests you can, you can administer for that and, uh, and certainly regulate it so that it's appropriate for the kind of fish you have. Uh, certainly the fish you see behind me here, these, these African cichlids, they, they, like to, um, they like to live in a hard water. Now, what does that mean? That means that their water has to have a lot of minerals in it, and that means that they consume a lot of minerals. So if you were to put these, um, these, hard water, these hard water fish in soft water, they would uh, maybe adapt for a little while, but they would start to struggle and more than likely eventually either, either become disease prone or die. Now you also have GH, which is general hardness, and now we're talking about all the other kinds of minerals, including a very important mineral called magnesium, uh, which is also important for things like digestion and the overall health of your fish. So you have the, the KH and you have the GH. Now these factors, these two, help with pH. Nitrogen cycle, the end of the nitrogen cycle gives you nitric acid. And KH helps to absorb, and of course GH, those minerals help to absorb the acid. And this, what this does, it gives you a more or less a pretty stable pH. Now, in everything I'm telling you, be sure that the most important factor here is a stable pH. pH is something you don't want to adjust too much too fast because it will shock your fish. And the scale is what is called logarithmic. In other words, seven is 10 times more than six on the pH scale. Eight is 100 times more than six. So there's a big difference there. So just realize that uh, shifts in pH are not a good thing. So at least not shifts that are uh, drastic. I say 0.3, a 0.3 shift, uh, you know, over a, over a short period of time is probably safe, 0.3, anything more than that, and you're, you're risking shocking your fish. So we have KH and your, your, and your calcium carbonate, and we have GH all the minerals that exist in the water otherwise. Now I use, I use things like um, Malawi lake salt, which is full of trace minerals. I also uh, have in the tank behind me, I have um, crushed coral. And crushed coral 
adds not just calcium, but also magnesium and other trace minerals to the water. Now keep in mind, for these fish behind me to appear as vibrant and as colorful as they are, they need to have that steady diet of minerals that they can only get, not by eating spinach or, or steaks, they can only get through the osmoregulation, through the passing of minerals through their skin and gills. That's the only way they can get it. So when you're adding or regulating the hardness or the mineral content of your tank water, you're actually feeding your fish. You're feeding them vital minerals. And the presence of those minerals also help with maintaining a stable pH, keeping your pH from, cr from crashing because the acids are being sponged up by these minerals. There's a, uh, a lot of uh, information on the web about the relationship between these, uh, I consider it sort of the, the aquarium trinity. You know, you have your KH, GH, and your pH. And uh, there's a lot of articles. Some of the articles that I found were heavily scientific and uh, you can get lost very, very quickly, very overwhelmed, very easily. And other articles uh, like the one I found at the uh, Cichlid Forum on uh, basic water chemistry were, were uh, very helpful and very easy to understand. So um, look into it, do some research, read some of the articles, measure the uh, KH and GH in your tank and see if it actually matches up with what is recommended for the type of fish you're keeping. If it's too low, you are risking, especially with uh, fish from the Rift Lakes, Malawi fish like the ones behind me, you are risking uh, rapid shifts in pH and you are actually starving your fish of valuable minerals. And I'll, and I'll tell you something else. Uh, KH, KH is a, also a nutrient that is consumed by your bacteria. So your KH levels are also helping with nitrification and with the nitrogen cycle. So you have the factors of oxygen and minerals that are feeding your beneficial bacteria. So you wanna keep the KH levels uh, high and, and in the right range for your kind of fish and realize that that KH, that those minerals and trace minerals are feeding your fish and they are feeding your beneficial bacteria so they can do their thing and turn ammonia to nitrite and nitrite to nitrate. Okay, so I really hope that helped. I'm continuing to study the topic and uh, as I have more aha moments, I will share them with you. And uh, I do keep the KH, GH very high in the tank behind me. The pH is very stable, right around eight and uh, you can see it in the colors and the, the, uh, just the beautiful coloration, the activity level of the fish, okay? They look pretty calm behind me. They're about to be fed. As soon as I approach that tank, they're gonna go crazy. So uh, let's take a look at the fish and end off here. Certainly if you have any comments or want to contribute to this conversation, uh, please, please make, make the comments below. I would love to hear your take on this PHKH and GH subject. I've, so at any rate, that's it for me. Let's take a look at the fish and let's go ahead and end off. Thank you so much, folks. So the more I'm studying the subject, the more I'm realizing that one of the reasons why these fish have this uh, beautiful translucence and these bright, bright colors is because they are not mineral starved. they are getting valuable nutrients because the water in my tanks are uh, very rich in not just calcium, not just your calcium carbonate, but both in GH and KH. So they're also getting a lot of valuable trace minerals, which helps with blood circulation, heart function, digestion, and overall health. And as you can see, it's contributing to fish that are very, very, 
very, very healthy looking and just a little bit less prone to disease because they have in their system the proper balance of minerals.